เจริญเชื่อวิชาชีพองค์ที่คิดนูเบลวัดอัตโตเซบุสัจจะสนะ the world of knowledge or learning as mentioned yesterday the knowledge is of two kinds agama sutta and adhikama sutta the the learning the Buddha's teaching and you can have you can gain the sutta knowledge to some extent uh, the knowledge is of is called sutta maya jnana or agama sutta sutta maya jnana means the knowledge uh, born of learning so that type of knowledge is called agama sutta the knowledge uh, based on learning and another kind of sutta is the adhikama sutta is uh, connected with uh, uh, your own experience your own enlightenment by that is the city but in our meditation you can experience the true phenomena and uh, you can obtain the real insight knowledge and uh, based on your own experience and insight knowledge you you attain the knowledge and that knowledge is called the uh, adhikama sutta empirical knowledge so regarding the sutta maya jnana or agama sutta the jnana the there is uh, two kinds of learning uh, the regarding uh, uh, three kinds of learning regarding the papa the some people they learn and uh, study all this scripture the buddha teaching uh, with the noble purpose to escape the cycle of the riba samsara but the number another uh, two learn is uh, the study Buddhist scriptures to maintain uh, the Buddha's teaching, to prolong Buddha's teaching. So he, he is compared as a uh, Trashara, Dhamma Trashara. He keeps Dhamma Trashara in Sikiva. So such Dhamma is called Bandhagarika. The first one is called Nitranatha. The last, uh, the third one is Alakadu Bama. Uh, he learned Buddhist scripture, Buddha's teaching, uh, with the, for the purpose to gain uh, personal gain, personal gain of faith. Or he want to be uh, proud of himself as a educated person, or he want to oppress other uh, educated people. So some people they learn Buddhist scripture with uh, these wrong purposes. Such learning is uh, called Alakadu Bama. Uh, such learning is compared to somebody who cuts the snake, poisonous snake, uh, in a no proper way, a wrong way. Actually, the a snake is supposed to be caught. With the fork, uh, with the fork and uh, cutting at its neck. But uh, the unskillful person, he cuts the snake uh, at the waist of it, so the snake right away uh, bites him back. So he suffers uh, the poisonous snake bite. So in the same way, when you learn Buddhist scriptures with the wrong purpose, then uh, your knowledge uh, will, will do more harm than good, and uh, you cannot enjoy the full benefit of the for your knowledge. So now here yogis are uh, practicing meditation and learning uh, Buddha's teaching. And then how to try to stick at an medication. Here I believe you have uh, suitable purpose. Uh, that is to escape the sansara and uh, wrong or the suffering. Or to purify your mind 
or the mental deprivation or to escape the sansara or to experience the ultimate peace of nibbana. So the learning, your learning here is uh, regarded as a mitranatha because your purpose is uh, for liberation. So now I only want to explain uh, to what extent you need to learn about the Buddha's teaching. So regarding the uh, Agama Sutta, the learning, the, the learning is referred to the study of Buddhist scripture. There is a, a divided into three parts. Okaha, Vipusa, and another one. The Okaha means the reciting or repeating the teacher after the teacher. As you know, in olden days there is no books or nothing to write, to write on. So the pupil students uh, repeat after the teacher, follow the teacher, and then they have to they have to memorize what the teacher taught. So that type of teaching is uh, done is for Okaha, the memorizing or repeating what the teacher is teaching. And as here the yogi, uh, you are here to try this meditation and then you are learning uh, what the sati mindfulness means, what are objects, what objects are to observe and uh, how to observe. And something like this you have to learn and uh, keep it, keep your own, uh, keep the learning in mind, uh, just like memorizing. And so this also should be regarded as the Okaha. So the second type of learning is called in Pali Pariposa. The Pariposa is uh, normally translated uh, discussion, discussion or discussing with the teacher or discussing with the fellow students. Then you have to uh, ask the teacher to explain the definition or the words you have learned or the explanation, further explanation or the passage and so on. So here you also doing such a such learning or pre-culture for the teacher. When the yogi cannot uh, note uh, properly, then he, he asks a question to the teacher, the question uh, is answered by the teacher, and then the teacher explains how to observe, uh, how to keep your uh, physical body straight, and uh, how to focus your mind on the object, how to pay attention to the object, uh, how to note I think falling and uh, how to apply uh, energy or how to arouse courage of the past, how to keep your mind alert and active, and uh, how to send your mind, how to direct your mind to the object precisely, accurately, and then uh, so you have to learn explanations from the teacher, you discuss uh, with the teacher. So such explanation or discussion or definitions uh, can be made uh, between the yogi and teacher. So sometimes the teacher may ask questions uh, to discuss with the yogi. Sometimes yogi himself or answer to ask questions. In this way, there will be discussion between the teachers and yogi. That type of learning is called pre-culture. So number three kinds of learning, number uh, that kind of learning is called village here. That's uh, the type of learning you make with the teacher. And then you have to go seek the qualifying teacher and then uh, you, uh, you make sure everything you know is correct. And then uh, so that you can overcome confusion. So sometimes you may need to raise questions to the teacher and uh, you may make discussion with the teacher and uh, uh, you and uh, 
and so that you can uh, get rid of the confusion. And later you can make Shiva or you quite have done it correct. So in this way uh, your confusion is uh, cleared off and uh, you make sure everything you learn is correct. That type of learning is called village, yeah? This learning is also Ahama Sutta. So to attain the um, suitable knowledge, you have to learn the, how to practice with a teacher, with a skillful teacher. Until you are satisfied with your knowledge. For example, when you study, when you learn Satipatthana meditation, you have to learn what to observe and how to observe and so on. The guy is what to observe. He says the whole body is an object to observe. But whatever phenomena is obvious to you, you have to pay priority to that object and be aware of it as it is. So in terms of the ultimate truth or arbitrary, the, the object to observe or meditative object are actually five aggregates, uh, five kanas. So you can experience five kanas, uh, for example, the Rupert kanas, you can experience the uh, elemental elements, the hardness, heaviness, and uh, fluidity and uh, one whole uh, vibration, motion and so on. So in the case of the uh, mental phenomena, you may experience several kinds of thoughts or seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting and so on. Or sometimes you may experience uh, the mental contact between the sense object and the mind. As the result, the the consciousness in the other consciousness take place, or as the result, the good or bad, pleasant or unpleasant sensation take place. So these are all major and physical phenomena, uh, the meditative object to all that. So if possible, you may need to learn the what are same basis, I don't know what are elements, dhati, what are satya, the truth, and uh, what the uh, sankara, the causality and conditionality, and uh, so on. In a brief way, the sense objects and the eye, they are combination produce the seeing consciousness. And in the same way, the ear and the sound, they are combinations arouse the hearing consciousness so on. So you can experience the real phenomena. These are all meditative objects to observe. And then you can see the causality, the relation to sit is the cause, which gives rise to the sitting physical process. And the relation to stand up is cause, uh, which produces the sitting down physical process. So in this way you can learn the how to observe and what to observe with the teacher uh, based on the uh, particular scope and uh, depending on the nation. And uh, there are uh, 70, 37 factors of enlightenment for the technical dharma. Although 37, the most important is uh, of course the four foundations of mindfulness, as you have learned repeatedly, the four objects to observe, the body, body and sensation, thoughts and general phenomena. These four objects are uh, for you to observe. So uh, the, the point is that uh, you are supposed to observe so whatever is obvious to you at the present moment. So when you are focused your mind on the object, uh, 
you can keep your mind away from mental defilement, you can stop the stream or current of the mental defilement uh, from flowing down. When your concentration gains momentum, then your mind is a tranquil and fully focused on the object, and you are able to observe the object the concurrently, then you start to see the, the real characteristic of the phenomena. And then, so in this way, the whole body is the brief object for you to know. But uh, all you need to do, all you need to observe is the, the present object, which is occurring from moment to moment, newly occurring from moment to moment. These are all you need to learn from the teacher or you need to study with the teacher. Thus you can gain suitable amount of the knowledge of the Sutta. So if you learn with the teacher on the practice as mentioned earlier, then your knowledge should be such enough for practice. So there are it's maybe a question is so is the to what extent we need to learn about the meditation practice. Regarding this uh, aspect in Buddha's time, one day the a person came and requested the Buddha to explain the how to practice in brief to liberate the outer uh, psyche of the river, out of the suffering for liberation. So the Buddha explains, if you know there is the only mental and physical phenomenon in the rising and the passing away in our body, they are all environment and satisfactory and uh, Egoless. So if you learn uh, about your uh, physical and power and physical and the mental phenomena to that extent, then your knowledge can be such enough for practice. So you need to learn what type of things are rupa, physical body, what are nama, uh, mental phenomena, and uh, they are uh, all impermanent, suffering, and uh, egoless. You just learn about that, then your knowledge is such enough for practice. So, if you want to attain the mega flag enlightenment, it's uh, not necessary to learn all these scriptures on big scale. All you need to know is uh, just uh, a few things. If you learn there, there is only mind and body and there is environment and suffering, then your knowledge should be set enough for practice. So when you learn the how to practice with the suitable purpose, correct purpose, then you can develop the wholesomeness. By learning, also you can reduce the mental defilement, such as the, the craving, aversion, and delusion to some extent. So we have to apply our knowledge to get rid of uh, those mental defilement, which are uh, deep seated in our mental process, life after life. So it is a necessary uh, or important to put our learning or knowledge into practice uh, so that we can attain the Divana Sutta, the enlightenment, the knowledge which is the uh, form of the enlightenment. Thank you, Lord. So the correct purpose to practice uh, is uh, for experience of the truth or to realize the truth. So, behind practice and sleep at another location, first of all, you have to cultivate 
the Samadhi, the right view. So that your practice can become fruitful. And uh, your Samadhi can be uh, cultivated through the five ways. The first of all, Siddha Nukhita, your Vipassana knowledge must be supported with the Sila. As a yogi, so Sila is uh, quite important. So you have to observe your, you have to uh, observe the Sila, the revenue from the physical properties. And then you have to learn how to observe Sila from the teacher that's called Okaha. And then you have to make discussion uh, on the suitable occasion that's called Pripocha. So in this way you can uh, support your Vipassana practice with the Sila. It's uh, just like a uh, making a fence around your trees and the plants for protection. So when you grow a tree and a plant, you have to make things around it so that uh, it, uh, the tree and the plants are safe and secure. So in the same way, your plants must be protected uh, by through the sea land. And the second the constitutive factor is called Sutta Nodhita. Then you have to support or upgrade your practice uh, through the knowledge and learning. So occasionally you need to learn the how to practice properly and then lesson in the uh, These are also contributed to your practice. So if you have something unclear or a type of confusion, you need to see the teacher and discuss so that you can correct the confusion. But the teacher may teach you how to practice and how to report. Regarding how to report, the procedure is first of all you need to report what type of objects you observe. Uh, and then you need to mention whether you are able to focus your mind on that object or not. And if you are able to focus on the object, then you need to mention what type of experience you have, what phenomena you experience from that object. You need to mention that. Or if you cannot focus your mind on the object, then what happens? You need to mention and then what you are doing at that moment, or your mind is going somewhere else, or you are fighting with the unpleasant sensation, and then what problem you need to explain to the teacher so that the teacher can correct the problem. So that's for uh, Sakacha, not Gita, the supporting your practice with the discussion, through the discussion with the teacher. So that's why it is quite important for yogis. The interview is quite important to see. But the time yogis, they don't know the value of the interview. So they once asked the practice the intensively, it's not that difficult. The problem is the interviewing with the teacher. So they don't want to interview with the teacher. And so they sometimes they even request uh, not to make interview with the teacher. So actually seeing the teacher and discussing with him, discussing with him is uh, quite conducive uh, to your practice. So that's for Satacha no You have to uh, support support them. You have to support your practice with the discussion for the teacher. And then number four, uh, the fourth factor to support your practice is the Samatha Lokanita. 
So sometimes we uh, travel with it, uh, which is uh, born on the concentration. So you have to focus your mind on the object, whatever is occurring to you. Then your mind is concentrated on the object. That's the technical summary, moment to moment concentration takes So to arouse that type of concentration, very young, uh, Arabia Assad, mindfulness and uh, concentration, uh, they have to work unanimously. Then only you can attain the technical summary, the moment to moment concentration. So through that concentration, you can support you can uh, upgrade your practice, you can help your practice improve. So that way of uh, supporting the practice is called Samatana Nidha. The supporting the practice with a, a momentary concentration tranquility. So the last one is the Vipassana Nidha. By observing uh, whatever is occurring to you, you can cultivate the Vipassana inside. So at the certain level of the inside knowledge, you may experience the uh, certain kinds of the rapture, beauty, and uh, bright light and so on. Then you may be excited or you may be attached to that object. Uh, you may think, you may take it as a for the remarkable achievement. Then you, uh, may be, if you are likely to attach to that uh, unusual experiences like the PT, Rapture, and Bailai, such a delight or such an attachment is called Nikandi. It's a very subtle uh, kind of attachment. It's called Nikandi, a type of delight connected with attachment. Then you need to make some more effort to overcome that weakness, the attachment, uh, so that you can develop a stronger, more powerful vipassana inside. So that's uh, supporting your practice with the vipassana inside. Uh, it is called vipassana nobhita. So in this way, you should upgrade. You should boost up your practice. Uh, through the five ways. So the Buddha uh, gave this uh, discourse in brief. So the commentary explained uh, with the example of this Soda. So the commentary they gave the example and uh, actually the gardener. For example the the mango Grow, mango half. There is a gardener. You need to make a fence around the garden, around the park, uh, to protect the animals and some other danger. And also, he need to water the trees and the plants regularly. And then the third one is uh, he need to dig. Around the trees, so that the root can go deeper and stronger. And the fourth is we need to get rid of the the insects, the harmful insects and pests. And even the small minor obstacles like the the, the spider web need to be cut off. So in this way, the gardeners need to take care of the trees. You have to nurture the tree all the time so that the tree can grow very well. So that's uh, this is the example given by the commentary for this point. So as mentioned the commentary, you need to learn the, what the purpose to lessen the Dhamma. For the purpose to make discussion with the teacher. Why we need to make great courageous efforts and practice? Why we have to develop the concentration? And for what purpose we have to uh, overcome the delight 
and I can use the title and so on. So now our time is spent. So Sharaji will continue to spend the morning as our coffee. Thank you.